Good morning, and welcome to Holy Trinity in Fayetteville, North Carolina. This morning, we mark the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. We have just a few announcements. First, later today, in your inboxes, you will receive an email with a link to it for the Spiritual Life Inventory Survey. This is part of the Renewal Works activity that Holy Trinity is engaging with. Uh, you should have seen a video that came out last week describing this. If you still have some questions, please reach out to me. Uh, but the, if the inventory, the survey will be coming out today. A reminder that it is totally anonymous. We do not know your answers or who filled it out. We will only be getting numbers of people who have completed it. In order for us to get the best results possible, though, uh, we need at least 166 of you to complete this. The survey takes 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, once you start it, they ask that you continue with it. If you close it, you lose it. Um, and so you'll be hearing more reminders on this, but I just wanted to give you a heads up that it's coming your way. Also, I would ask you to mark your calendars for Sunday, February 14th at 1130. We will be holding a parish meeting via Zoom to go over and introduce the 2021 budget. Keith St. Peter will be uh, putting together a video that will launch earlier that week. It's the same format that we did for the annual meeting. And so his report will come out earlier, basically explain the nuts and bolts of the budget. And then on February 14th, beginning at 1130, we will gather as a parish to address any questions, concerns, any clarities that need to be made at that point. On February 16th, it's a Tuesday night at 5.30, we will have our traditional burning of the palms. COVID will not stop us from burning palms. And so we will gather at 5.30 out in the front parking lot on Rayford Road. Uh, we have the palms already, but it's a short liturgy. Uh, and we just might have a little Mardi Gras fun with some masks and some beads. Uh, so I ask you to mark your calendars for that event as well. Speaking of burning palms and ashes, the following day, uh, February 17th, is Ash Wednesday. Our liturgies will be remote via um, recorded, but we will have ashes available. We're gathering all those details and putting on the, the final touches on that, so please stay tuned for more details on that one. And lastly, well not lastly, but next, uh, the church envelopes are available in the church office. Church office hours are Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Lastly, I'm still looking for folks who want to party. I heard that Holy Trinity has a wonderful uh, social life, but I'm having a hard time getting folks who want to help me plan the 70th anniversary. And so just as a reminder, the 70th anniversary will be a year and a half long, and we will mark the key dates of the founding of Holy Trinity with a bunch of different activities. And so if we get enough people, you'll just have to work on one of those activities, whichever one you find to be the most fun. So if you're interested, in, and I ask you to really pray over this, uh, please let me know at rector at holytrinityfay.org or let Susie know in the church office, or her email is admin at holytrinityfay.org. I invite you to sit in silence and recall the presence of Christ. Hymn number 493, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Just 
Please stand as you are able. Our liturgy begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 111. We will read it in unison. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. 
The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, I will never eat meat so that I might not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, 
convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, what is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, unclean spirits in a holy place. Who would ever have thought that one? Right? Today is a powerful, powerful reading. A reading that may be uncomfortable. Uh, So when we try to think, when we think of unclean spirits and we think of Satan and we think of evil, most of us probably think of seeing those things in other people or other events or other groups or otherness of any kind. But I think to take today's reading at its heart and to really let it work on each one of us is to begin to work and think about those unclean spirits that each of us have. We have them. We have them. And as we begin to work into Lent, yeah, believe it or not, it's just a couple weeks away, I think that this is a very, very powerful scripture when we really let it work on us. We each have unclean spirits within us. Now, if you are dealing with some kind of addiction that makes it it easy, right? Because those um, addictions are things that we do to ourselves, but are very visible. Not all of us have addictions of that kind, but that does not mean that we don't battle with unclean spirits. So an unclean spirit for me is anything that detracts my engagement, my relationship, my love for the divine. Anything that creates a stumbling block that keeps me from being wholly who I am in the image of God who created me. And so that now takes this whole idea of unclean spirits and broadens it to include all of us. And so I think that as we look back on our individual stories, on our individual pasts, and we examine our sinful natures, the stumbling blocks that we each fall into, they may be, they're different for all of us, but we all have them and offering that up for God to make those moments, those pieces of us holy. We try to take those pieces of us and we try to hide them. And so what are these pieces, what are these pieces that I'm talking about? Well, you know, alcoholism, drug addiction, pornography addiction, all those things are easy. But there are also a a smaller amount of us that deal with those. Many of us deal with things like um, telling the truth, being transparent. Uh, me, For me personally, it's the I'm not good enough voice. I'm not good enough. I'm sure I'm not alone in that one. Others of us might have body issues. We might have self-confidence issues. These are all unclean spirits. We might be, um, we might have this unclean spirit of greed or the unclean spirit of envy that leads to hatred. And so each one of these unclean spirits, let's use my, let's use mine, okay? I never feel like I am good enough no matter what I do. 
And so it is that unclean spirit that leads me to the propensity of being a workaholic, that need to be perfect. Because unless I am perfect and everything that I do is perfect, then that feeds that voice that, see, I told you, you're not good enough. See, I told you. And so it starts with this idea of, I'm not good enough, and then it keeps building. It's like a magnet. And so the, the unclean spirit is the magnet, but then all this other stuff gets attached to it and, and weighs us down over and over and over again. So for me, this feeling of not being good enough leads to perfectionism, which then, I can't be perfect, which then supports the idea that I'm not good enough. And so you, you can see the wheel that we fall into. And for me personally, I lose so much time that I could be enjoying life, I could be walking, I could be playing with Pugsley, I could be doing all kinds of fun stuff, but no, I got to be working because I need to make it perfect. And so I'm hurting myself, yes, but more importantly, I'm not enjoying all the joy and the glory and the beauty that God is trying to pour into my life because I'm hooked on this unclean spirit. So when we begin to look at ourselves in a really, really hard, difficult, long look at ourselves, being as honest and truthful as possible, it begins to shed away and add some light onto these unclean spirits. It allows a little crack for God to call us and say, there it is, there it is again. And you get to the point where, where now it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, there it is. I see it, God, I see it, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this down, I can't be perfect. I'm gonna let it roll the way it is. Because you are calling me into greater and a deeper relationship to go out, pick my head up, and enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the warm days, enjoy the garden, enjoy whatever it is. So each one of these unclean spirits, they hold us hostage. And that's what Jesus is trying to, to demonstrate this morning. Is It's hard to give up an unclean spirit. We may never do it. But the more we can realize they're there, the more we can lift it up and give it to God, the more we can allow our prayer lives to break it apart, dismantle it within us, bring it up to our awareness so that we can laugh at it and put it aside and move on to what God is asking us to do. That's where the healing comes in. That's where the revelation, getting us back into epiphany, the revelation that God is in us, God is around us, God has us. The more we let go of these unclean spirits, the more we are free to move and to dance with the Holy Spirit. We are more transparent to, to shine God's glory, God's hope to those around us. Otherwise, we live captive to these spirits. We don't enjoy the full glory. We don't enjoy the joy, the joy that God is trying so desperately to pour into our lives. I invite you to take the next couple of weeks before we get into Lent and keep track, just on a little piece of paper or your, or your phone, just keep track of some of the things that you feel are in the way for you to fully enjoy the glory that God is trying to pour into your lives. What are those stumbling blocks? What are those pitfalls, whatever you want to call them? What are those dark moments when you feel that you're being robbed, feeling the presence of the full God in your lives? Just jot them down. And then begin to look at them. I promise you, you'll probably see a trend 
You look at them long enough, and this is not about beating yourself up. This is about awareness. This is not about punishment. It's about awareness. But when you begin to look at them in a list, you'll begin to see the common thread. That's what we're after. We're not after beating ourselves up about the activities. We're going after the common thread. We're going after the heart of it. When we can have compassion with the heart of it, and we can love ourselves in spite of whatever they are, <laughs> then, then we are feeling the love of God. God loves us regardless of our growing edges, our unclean spirits, our humanness. God loves it all. So there's your homework assignment for this week. God wastes nothing. Not our unclean spirits, not our moments of darkness, not even our sins. God washes them all, he gives them back to us as lessons and as teachers. Nothing, nothing is wasted. Let us profess the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed, beginning on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people today are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer or in the PDF. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for the victims of recent natural disasters and acts of violence. We pray for government leaders, especially Joe, our president, Roy, our governor, and Mitch, our mayor. 
We pray for protection and courage for those serving as first responders and those in the armed forces. We pray for health and endurance for all essential workers, especially medical personnel and teachers. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week and for those celebrating anniversaries. We pray for those in need of healing and strength. We pray for those who have recently died and for those who grieve. I invite your prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either aloud or in the holy silence of your hearts. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask. Help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I now invite you to move about the household, sharing a sign of Christ's peace. And later today, send a text or call those who are close to your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Hey kiddos, come on down. Come have a seat with me. Wow, this last week of godly play, it's about the great parable. Have you seen the video? It's, it's got a lot in there. It's got a lot of information. And so I wanna take just one little piece of it. I wanna take one little piece. And that is the idea of John's gospel talks about Jesus as being a word. And a word comes from God and a word um, is God. And so God comes down into our lives originally uh, in the form of Jesus. So God became a human man, a human being just like us, in the birth of Jesus. And when Jesus dies and ascends back to God, the words of Jesus stay with us. And all those words of Jesus and what God needs us to know and what God needs us to remember are in the Bible. And so why is it that John chooses to use this whole idea of a word to talk about Jesus? What do you think that is? Yeah, I'll tell you. John wrote his, his gospel, this, his stories of Jesus. He wrote those in a time of history when uh, the first Christians were just beginning to find their own. So Christianity was just beginning to come into its own. And so there were a, a whole group of Jewish people, Hebrews, Jew, Jewish people who decided and felt that what Jesus was, was the, the Son of God, the Messiah. And so they were becoming the first Christians. Now, 
when anything new comes in, there's always a whole lot of anger and fear and problems. And so these, these, this new community that John is a part of, they were getting kicked out of the synagogue because they suddenly were believing in the Messiah. And so back then, when you got kicked out of the synagogue, you lost your livelihood, you lost your job, you didn't have any more friends, you didn't have um, any community, and so you were a real outcast. Has anybody felt that way, like when you lose a friend and you think you've lost all your friends? Have you, anybody felt that? I have. I have felt that. And that's not a very pleasant feeling, is it? It really hurts. So John reminds these folks that are feeling that way, that are feeling like they've lost all their friends and that nobody likes them. And he reminds them that God is the Word. And the words that we hear and the words that we speak are very, very powerful. And that when we're hurting and we're confused or we're angry and we don't know how to act, or we've done something wrong and we're in time out, when we're feeling that, that separation, when we're feeling left out for whatever reason, that is the time when we rely on scripture. That's one of the time that we open our Bibles and we rely on what's in there. That's why reading scripture and knowing the stories are so important. So I know Christmas has passed us, um, but there are plenty of children's Bibles out there on, on Amazon and other stores. And so if you don't have a children's Bible in your home, if you ask mom and dad, I bet they would find one. If they can't find one, you have them call me and I'll help them find one. I'll make sure that you get one. But it's very important, and today is a reminder in our Godly Play lesson, that scripture, the stories of the Bible are very, very important. They help us when we don't feel very good. They help us when we don't feel good because we're sick or when something bad has happened or when we want to celebrate and we don't exactly know how to thank God. They help us in the good times too. Oh, it's been so, so good to spend a little bit of time with you. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're enjoying school, whether you're remote or in person. Pretty soon we're gonna go into Lent and you know what that means? That means that Easter is right around the corner, a couple months away. And what does that mean? That means that it gets warm out and the buds will start budding and the flowers will start blooming. Uh, and so we're almost there, we're almost there. You have a great week. I love spending some time with you. Can't wait to see you in person. Be good and be healthy. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
stand as you are able. Our liturgy continues with the Eucharistic Prayer B, beginning on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please join me for a prayer for communion with Christ. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our liturgy continues with the post-communion prayer found on page 365 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God rest upon you. May his peace abide with you. May his presence illuminate your hearts now and forever. Through the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those you love, here on earth and in heaven, today and always. Amen. Hymn number 535, verses 1 and 4. to God.